In this video, we will go through the plug. So the plug is shown right here. Um, and you can see that it is a generally circular piece with a bunch of different grooves, almost like a key of sorts. We also see that the material is uh, bronze. And we see a bunch of dimensions. It almost looks a little overwhelming uh, at first glance. But once we get started, you'll probably see that it's not as bad as it might appear. Um, and as we just talked about earlier in class today, these this hatching right here is indicating that this is a section view. And we are looking at this material or this piece cut right in half. We see a bunch of diameter symbols, meaning this is perfectly circular. And it is showing you what the diameter is at that instance. And over here, we see a few different types of hole sections. I don't think we've done these yet so i'll explain that as we do them uh basically we are introducing holes that aren't just perfectly drilled that actually have a little bit of a different uh ending to it you can see the little uh taper off that happens over here um another question that you should be asking yourself is are we in metric or are we in english is this going to be inches or millimeters sometimes it says other times you might have to think for a second to figure it out this one you can tell is going to be in inches. The reason why I know that is look at these decimal places. Metric is always base 10. So if it was like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, then it would probably be millimeters. But because we are dealing with 0.125, which is 1 eighth, we are dealing with inches, which deals with base 2, you know, 1, one half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1 30 second of an inch. So let's get started, okay? Um, so let's join a computer. What was it? MAS113, right? Yeah. And we are going to uh, learn a few different... Ooh, look, I'm still up from last time. Actually, I don't know if this is me. This could be anybody's. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm not going to close it out. I might get a nasty email asking that someone saying that someone destroyed their work okay so we're going to create a new sketch we'll do the xy and when we do this let's go back to the um you probably are thinking okay this is just going to be a bunch of different sketches because what i see when i look at it at first glance is a bunch of little cylinders right cylinder cylinder a point eight seven five cylinder in that distance and and you'd be right like that is one way to do it but there's actually an easier way to do it let me introduce introduce to you the revolve command and the revolve command basically will take a cross section and it will revolve it around an axis so let's do a real simple one and then we'll do the more complex one. So I'm going to do a line right here. And over here under formatting, we can see different types of lines. We typically stick to um, object lines, which is none of these. There's also construction line. Uh, construction lines are lines that are there for reference, but they're not actually there in, 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 in real life. They're just there to help you project something or just to have a reference point. Then over here, we have the center line. That's the one I'm going to want for the revolve. The center line will give me an axis to revolve my geometry around. So I'm going to click this center line right here. And I'm just going to draw a line right here. And I don't care too much about the length yet. And then I'm going to hit escape. And notice how center line is still highlighted. You are going to want to just click on it again to get out of it. If you forget that step and then you draw something and hit escape, it will still be uh, in center line. Why is it not doing it? Maybe that's like an update. All right, so we have center line highlighted and then we do a circle. Oh, all right, maybe that's a new update. So, in, sorry, in the, sorry about that. Let me give you a little backstory now. In the previous version of Inventor, if you didn't check out of it, it would keep that as the dashed um, pattern right there. Doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. But I'm still going to uncheck it, though. It's a little bit 
I don't know, weird. Okay, that was a little choppy right there. But to recap, you want to have a center line on the bottom. You want to turn center line off and then do your geometry. Now, when I revolve this geometry, imagine me taking this circle and then revolving it around this line right here. And what shape am I going to get? If you said donut or like a tube, you'd be correct. So I'm going to finish the sketch. And we've done extrude, right? So extrude would look like that. But revolve, let's see what revolve does. Revolve rotates this around that axis, and then you have a nice solid ring. All right, pretty cool, huh? Ooh, no. All right, well, I tried. So let's delete that, and let's go from the top. Let's go back to this, and we're going to start with doing our center line. And I'm going to make my center line the exact length right here. I know from start to finish, it's going to be 5 and 1 eighth inches long. So I'm going to make my center line that distance. Line, making it a center line from the origin going out. And you can either type this as 5 space 1 divided by 8. You can do 5.125. You can do 5 plus 1 eighth. All of them are valid ways. So you can actually type in mathematical equations into the, the dimension space right there. Okay. Good. So I'm going to uncheck that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to draw this shape right here. It looks like it goes straight up or maybe a chamfered. So we'll go straight up, over, up, over, up, over. So how many, how many steps do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps indent back to the top. So I'm going to just draw that geometry. And then I'm going to add the dimensions later. So in this instance, uh, what is this? Oh, I guess I just clicked on some random person stuff. Um, this one does have a hole in the middle. However, I'm going to do that hole at the end. So I'm going to draw my piece right on here right if i wanted to put like a gap right there you could do something like that right and then when you just kind of showing you what i mean right if i did something like that and then i revolved it you would have a nice little space in the middle but if i put this right along the edge, then there won't be a space. It'll be right there. So that's what I want to do this time. So let me delete this. What did I say? Seven steps, I think. And you kind of want it to be a little bit close to like what the dimensions are. It does make it easier because then you don't have instances of it crossing each other. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it was seven steps and then it was down and then up. I don't think that was the right height. I don't think this one was the right height. So I'm going to go ahead and redo that one. I want it to go up to the same spot right there. So I'm going to constrain it. There we go. And I forget, I think you're supposed to close it off. Okay, 
So let's make sure we're good. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps down and then back up. Does that match this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps down, then back up. All right, we are golden. Okay, now we are going to add some dimensions. So what makes this different is, so when we do the dimensions, we're going to click right here, and then you might be tempted to go from like here to right there. And that says 0.25. And because we know, for example, that that first dimension is right here, 0.375, the distance of the radius, which would be the dimension that I just shown right there, would be half of it. So if I know from top to bottom across that whole rotation is 0.375, the dimension that's shown right here is supposed to be half of it. However, there's actually an easier way. Uh, let me actually go ahead and delete that first line. Well, I meant to delete the, the regular line. I want to keep the center line. So I'm going to redraw that center line. You can always backspace or, um, I mean, undo. I want to keep that center line visible. Watch this. I'm going to hit dimension. But instead of going from this line to the origin, I'm going to go from this line to the center line. And watch what it does. It immediately assumes that you are going to be using the revolve command and gives you the opportunity to dimension what the overall diameter would be as opposed to just that linear distance. So I'm going to click right here and say it's 0.375. Boom. And we're going to do that for all of these. So it's going to be a little bit of back and forth. I'm going to actually snag a picture of my phone so I don't have to be doing this back and forth. Let's go back. Okay, so now I'm going to dimension this. So I'm going to click this line to here, click, and that dimension is 0.625. And then from here to here is 0.875. one point one two five one point three seven five and you don't have to be organizing it like I am you could just leave it wherever it like wants to be because this isn't this is only for geometry purposes this is not for presentation purposes we have one point six two five And finally, this last height is 2.625. And then, oh, this little piece right here. So let's make sure we click on it. To the center line is 1.875. And okay, so the reason why that is the case is I thought I constrained it, but I didn't. So you're gonna have to do that again with this one. 2.625. Okay. Now we have to do some of these linear dimensions. Ugh, this looks like it could be annoying. The hardest part about this is just kind of sifting through all the all the lines to make sure that you're doing the right thing. All right, so uh, looks like we're going to be using this as the baseline. So we're going to go from, I'm looking at the top. So this distance right here seems to be 0.25. And let's make sure that we have the overall set to 5.25. We don't want to mess with that. From this line to this line should be 0.5. From this line to this line should be 0.75. Okay, it's starting to get that overall shape. From here to this corner, 
is 1.5. I'm trying to figure out what is that. Oh, okay, it's just not a big difference. Okay, so from here to here is what's the next one? 2.25. Two point eight seven five, and just a lot of dimensions. Three point six two five. Four point two five, and is that everything? It says over here that I'm missing a dimension, but I'm not quite sure where. Nope, not there. If I can't, I'll I'll fiddle around for a minute. If I don't get, I'm just gonna. Uh, yeah. If I can't figure it out, I'm just gonna move on because I think I drew it correctly. I'm just trying to figure out where it's saying that I should have another one. All right, we'll just leave it like that. And we are done with the first sketch. So a lot of dimensions, but hopefully that didn't seem too bad and you can follow along. So we're going to finish that sketch and oh, a little ugly. Let's revolve it. And there we go. It revolves it automatically around that axis. And we now have a gorgeous piece right here. And if I choose this corner of the cube right there, if my thing would work, that's more similar to what the home view is shown. So I'm going to make this my, my, my fit to view current home view. And let's call that a wrap for this first video. In the next video, we are going to be doing the holes.